It's science time! Hope everybody is excited! We are going to look at some quantum stuff today and some... With lasers. Hi everybody. Hi Orion. Hope everybody's having a great day. Uh, Sherry, hello! And Laura. So, yes! So today we're going to do... I've had some requests for some... Uh, diffraction and light experiments, and some quantum weirdness. So, hey, Euro, yes. Yes, it is, indeed. So, thanks, Scott. Thanks very much. Yeah, I did a cast earlier today. If you want to watch on the replay, it was... I tried to keep it pretty brief, and it was really on just tech safety, especially with the new updates. So please check that out if uh, if you're interested in, uh, in keeping things safe and your location, etc., and uh, keeping your information safe, especially if you're a broadcaster. Hi, Buzzy. Hi, hi from Ireland. Oh, great, great. Thank you. Yes, um, thanks very much to Scott. Scott is, uh, has given me uh, a really great uh, viewer base, so thank you so much. So, I am well, thanks. All right, so we will get to it. Hi, Nutmeg and Fred, yes. Um, so today I have a laser, two lasers in fact, and we are going to talk about some quantum fun stuff. And for anyone who's new, my name's Julia. Uh, handle here is Fine Woman, so I'm working on my set still, but I've got my diagram board as you saw. You are! I see you, Pensive. Uh, quantum fluctuation, right now you are in a... you are in a very measurable state, because I see that comment. So, Julia is my name. Absolutely right. Very much. If you, What's cooler than one laser is two. So, what uh, I'm going to show you here is how you can actually use your own hair for uh, these kind of experiments, for a double slit experiment. So nanometers, how many nanometers wide? So it's going to be a few thousand nanometers wide. The typical hair width is about 10 to 100 or so microns. Uh, so yesterday we were talking about micrometers versus nanometers, and that's that dot, a point, and then you have eight zeros and a one, that's a nanometer. So a micrometer is a point and five zeros and a one. So it's all in fractions of a thousand. Hi from Philadelphia. So I will show you first. So that will be coming, that's gonna come from the explanation here. So first what we're gonna do is put up a little screen here for you, for everyone to see. And all I have, again, so laser pointers you can buy with, uh, from, from toy store or pet stores for your cats. And they're relatively inexpensive, but I have a couple of different colors because we can also talk about wavelength if we want, if people are interested. And for anyone who is new again, welcome, thank you for joining. And I ask, oops, that if you understand what I'm saying, that is, uh, hi Anne. Yes, for cats. So, you know, they have at pet stores those toys. If you understand what I'm saying, that's kind of how I ask people to use the hearts. Um, I'm not too interested in the number so much, but that's a, that's a quicker and more immediate way for me to know that you understand. Thank you. And if you uh, do, don't understand something and would like me to explain in a new or better way, please type 42 or just type something to tell me you don't uh, understand. Yes, this will be wave particle duality. I do not have a blue laser. I have here a green one. And then I also have, on a keychain here, a red one. So, yeah, they might be shaped like mice, but that's going to be the plastic casing. Hi, Constantina. 42 is a Douglas Adams reference for anyone who's not familiar. It's from the book, uh, Gerda, welcome. It's from the book, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So this is going to be, oh, there's my laser. This is going to be kind of funny, but I'm actually going to use just my arm and some of the finer hairs here, because you're going to see the diffraction happen with the laser. I'm very well, thanks, Constantina. So I might not be able to see the comments just here for, uh, it is the answer, but it's just not the question for everyone. So if I come here, hope everybody, I might need a better, yeah, that's probably pretty too, too bright. But if you can see the laser, we're going to look for dots. So I can see them quite clearly here, which you may not be able to hear. So I'm going to try it's funny, the camera settings and the periscope camera settings don't work so well. But all I'm doing is using my arm, and you should see... Yeah. I'm sorry, everybody. Hold on one second. I'm going to get a better screen so everybody can see this. Okay. You can see clearly. I can see clearly now. 
I'll sing while I... My voice is pretty bad though, so I won't torture anyone. Alright, let's see if this works a little better. I tested this in the camera, but those periscope settings don't seem so great. Alright everybody, let's try this once more. So, we see the red laser pointer here. Aha, yeah, this is going to work better. And as I get closer and start going through my hair, then what we're going to see is these dots appear. And that is going to be the diffraction. So if you have a laser pointer at home, you can see. So does anyone see that line of dots that's kind of going diagonally? I see some hearts, so hopefully people see it. You see it looks like a dashes. So this is kind of a not great laser pointer, um, which gives it that not nice quality around it, as you can see here. So that means the, the lens inside is all scratched. So that's not great. But I'm going to try this again, and we'll see. You should see this line of kind of dashes coming out diagonally. If I can sh put it in, in the screen here, huh? There we go. Ah, that one's going kind of perpendicular. Kind of depends. Yeah, on the uh, on the screen there. So definitely look on the screen. So I'll try it with the green one now that we have the better the better. Uh, there we go. So you see that line? Those lines of uh, dots and dashes? Yeah, that's a little better. There we go. Dots and dashes. So that's just because the laser is going through my hair, which is acting as a diffraction pattern, or a diffraction grid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, even cooler. So that's with your hair, so that's the cheap way. So I have this, which is called a diffraction. Let's see if it focuses. Yes a diffraction grating, and so these are little, uh, these are actually quite cheap, you can get these on Amazon, and it will not burn your hair, not with any of the standard lasers, it's not enough, uh, not high enough energy, but if you, you can get these either on Amazon, or uh, I'll probably send them out as some trivia prizes here soon, but what you can see if is if I send the laser here without it, you just see the dot, and if I send it through here, oh, that's, uh, wow, the dots are so spread that it's actually hard. There we go. So you can see the multiple dots. Uh, there. Yes, they do have military grade lasers that are portable. Portable enough even to put on big machinery. So you see that? And then the really cool thing here is that the red one is going to have a, dis a different distance between those dots than the green one. And I'm sure Yero knows why, and maybe a if Lariat, if he's here, I know a few people are going to know why. But I'll try to do these both at the same time to show you that. Uh, let's see. Can I... I should be able to do two lasers at the same time, given my job description, huh? <laughs> yes, okay. So we've got red here, and it's also going to matter on the angle a little bit. So you can see actually how... Where's my third hand? Yeah. Uh, get the show name printed. Oh, yeah, the, diff the diffraction gratings, huh? So why the difference? Great question. So there we can see the dots at different angles depending on how I come in. And the difference... I'll flip around just to say hi to everybody quickly while I get this. Oh, uh, thank you so much, Buzzy. So the difference here... I'll show with these diagrams just to kind of make it make sense a little bit. So for these guys, what would we expect? That's the first question we might want to ask, right? What would we expect if it's not a wave? Yes, so the frequency is different. You can uh, you can use both lasers at the same time if you have three hands, apparently. That wasn't, uh, that wasn't quite <laughs> easy to do as I thought it would be. But here, if... If this laser pointer, right, if we were to send the light, the light through, and if it were to act kind of like a, uh, a particle, then it would only get through when it could go through the different slits, right? So then you'd see the pattern of one dot versus two dots, um, and they would not be right in front of where that original laser pointer was, which is what we saw just before. So what's actually happening is we've got this laser source here, and it's a wave kind of thing. So just like in water. So if you were to have a tub of water, uh, you could do the same thing. So 
as the wave travels and propagates, you can see that the wave has to squeeze through these two little dots. And so each wave front, they call it, which is going to be, this is one wave front, and this is another wave front, what's right in front of those dots. These interfere, and right where they cross, oops, sorry, right where they cross, is where you're going to get them interfering constructively. So that's going to be that's going to be when the waves line up like. Let's do a different color here. What do we want? This one that looks good. Uh, we can so color here. That's the constructive interference, right? So when we do that, what we end up with is actually going to look like this, and it's brighter. So it's going to be brighter here, um, which is these points here. So is everybody kind of understanding what I'm saying here? Please let me know if, um, if it's not making sense. I'll try to slow down and, and uh, explain a little better. But what's happening at these points, these dark points, is where the wave is... Great, thank you, Buzzy. So, and the hearts, thank you so much. Okay, great. So the waves, where they're dark, it's going to be because we're adding... I'll do kind of dots we're adding like this. And so when we add like that, then this up part and the down part cancel to give you no wave and it goes dark. Do we get a certificate? Are you asking me, David, about a certificate? <laughs> uh, but this is how the wave particle duality kind of question comes up is how does light act like a wave or a particle? And so when Einstein uh, did his photoelectric effect experiment. What is the name of the things that collide? So it's not so much a collision in the terms of light, it's uh, more of an interference we call it, so it's constructive in this case where we get a bigger uh, resulting wave, or destructive where we cancel uh, interference. So exactly where the crests align, absolutely right. Um, where they cancel then you get destructive interference and so then it's going to go dark. And that's exactly what we saw with those dots. That is because this laser being one color, this is the other important part. So the laser being one color is the fact, it comes from the fact, or I should say helps us see this, because we're going to have the same shaped wave front here and here to interfere and show us these nice dots. So the, if we were to have white light, I hit you there, thanks, thanks Jason. So if we were to have white light, then we wouldn't see this as well, like with a flashlight. What we're going to see, interestingly, is, oops, sorry. we'll see, interfering constructively. Good, good answer, actually. Very good answer. So what we're going to see is, right, no, no dots, I'll try to hold it, just a bunch of white light. And, but we kind of see a rainbow maybe, right? And so if I show you here, you can see the reflection, that rainbow color. And so that's because white light, if anyone remembers from some of the earlier lessons, white light was, is made up of all of the colors of light that we can see. So unlike uh, primary colors of paint, which are red, green, and, sorry, red, yellow, and blue, light has primary colors of red, green, and blue. Yep, and that acts like a prism. So it's, so each energy, each color of light, is going to have this effect at different angles because these wave fronts are going to interfere at different places. It's like dropping a tiny pebble into a pool of water versus dropping a huge rock. And the interference that you see, if you drop a whole bunch of pebbles of all different sizes, it just looks like a mess. But what we're doing with the green or the red laser, that's why it works with the laser, is, um, yeah, perception boss for sure. And the laser for sure uh, here is one color, and so these give us this nice diffraction pattern. So doing the two different lasers at the same time, the reason we see the dots at different places is because these wave fronts have different shapes, and so they interfere with different spacings. And that shape, or rather the the width of the wavefront has only to do with the energy, which is the color. So these are all saying the same thing. Energy, frequency, color, um, wavelength. They're all related to one another directly. And that's what affects how far apart 
these spacings are. Hopefully, hopefully that kind of made sense to people. Can we predict these? Free announcements. Free, oh, I like that radio silence. Very nice. Free announcements. Oh, uh, we definitely are. Definitely Periscope family. So, well, yeah, thank you for everybody for, uh, for sticking with me and interacting. Um, does anybody have any questions about that or uh, either further questions or things you'd like to see down the line? Because I know I had a question about this uh, yesterday. So, is that a question perception? Please go ahead and ask. But this is really neat because what I'll do is talk tomorrow a little bit more about the crystals we were looking at yesterday with the with the microscope. Uh, that the way that we can often find out about the shape of crystals is using similar physics, is sending in colors and seeing how far apart it's spread because that has to do with how how uh, the distance between those those different um, spots here. So, <laughs> ask about your. Nose hair? Is that what I said? Can we cut glass with diamonds? So if I had a surplus of diamonds, I would absolutely do it. But uh, so the other the other thing I'll say, this thousand diffractions. It's nice, hero. Very nice. So the um, here we go. The thousand lines per millimeter. That that number. That is essentially that's related to how far apart these two these two dots are, this, the, where those wave fronts can come through. So that's the other very important part about the spacing. So how is that spacing going to be affected? Well, if the spacing is the same for two lasers, say, then the two lasers will have, uh, the two colors will have different spacings. Um, oh, I see. <laughs> well, hey, a lot of physicists do their best work when they're uh, at pubs. So the other thing that we can affect if we say, okay, we're only going to have a green laser, but then we'll do a different spacing between these two dots. That will also change this pattern because that would be like pulling this whole wave front farther down. And so those, inter those interference patterns will change as well. And so the electrons I'll have to work on. Sorry, Pensive, I don't have the equipment here, <laughs> here to do the electrons. But the particle, the particle aspect of light, that is going to be that is going to be uh, what we've seen, for instance, if you were to take a, take a, uh, a big board and cut two tennis ball wide slits in the board and then throw a bunch of tennis balls. Then the tennis balls will only hit where it's able to go through and um, it'll make patterns right in front of those, uh, those openings in that big board if you make that. So that would be one way to do a particle. Uh, to see that particle behavior, which looks more like, which would look more like this picture here. So that would be the particle behavior. And then if we were talking about light, uh, what, what Einstein figured out was, and the reason they thought at first that it was acting this particle-like uh, behavior is, let's see if I can draw it here, is because if we draw an electron orbit for a nucleus here, so this will be our positive charge, and we've got this minus electron that's going around here. Is it multiple choice exam? No, multiple choice exams I will never ever give. Only uh, full explanations in, in your own language. So the, uh, the excitement of an electron going around, say, this would be a hydrogen atom, Right? So the excitement of an electron, the electron is going to have to take up more space if it absorbs that energy. So then that would look, oh gosh, that's, let's, uh, let's undo that one. <laughs> so then that would look more like, oh goodness, I'm quite bad at these circles, aren't I? There we go. So that would look more like this guy. It's going to take up more space, the same electron, right? So this actual difference, this energy difference, which I'm just drawing as space here, that would be a particular amount of energy. And so the wave coming in, like the laser, if the light comes in, then one photon, that packet of light, will excite, if it's the right amount of energy, if it has enough energy, it will excite the electron to take up this amount of space instead, and higher energy level, exactly. And uh, 
you can do that with one photon. And so it kind of, that kind of uh, gives the particle feeling because it's delivering a particle of energy, um, particle-like energy to excite these, uh, these electrons up. But the double slit experiment shows exactly that wave nature because we would we see that interference pattern and so we can do that um <laughs> yeah some of the some of the science diagrams tend to look the same for different <laughs> different explanations but the the hair thing is neat because you can either take your own hair um so it, that's fine enough because that's going to be about the same wavelength of light uh who is my oh i have some i have some wonderful mentors uh some people that i've worked with and uh as well as Carl Sagan, the more famous scientists maybe, Carl Sagan, Neil deGrasse Tyson, those as well as inspirations. But mentors would be a lot of the people that I've worked with uh, over the years, both in undergrad and grad school, have been very helpful, so, and great friends. Tatiana's one of them, she's been on here before, she's a good, great mentor of mine as well, and a uh, very good friend. The only thing that interferes with my life is my education, <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> Which of for classical physics or quantum physics? Uh, probably I prefer only quantum because uh, there's still so much to to understand and it's not intuitive, so it's uh, it's it's fascinating. And but classical physics, I, that's a hard question. Good question, but hard question. I do like them both. It is hard. Yeah, it's uh, that was oh I didn't know that I didn't know that yeah euro. Yeah, I would say just look around, reach out to people that are doing things very similar to what you want to do, and uh, don't be afraid to send emails. You might not get a response, but it doesn't hurt to send emails. So hopefully that was fun today with the, I can show the, the personal, the personal uh, use of, of your own body in safe ways to show the diffraction once more. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, so, well, some science classes were more, as a kid, I guess, more exciting than others. So, there we see. Okay, so we see those dots and dashes. So that's only because I am reaching the level of my hair here, and we're seeing that diffraction pattern um, show up because of the interference. So, and then the nicer version, where these lines are much more organized, unlike the hair example, these lines are much more organized, and so I've got this uh, diffraction grating here, and we can see the, hopefully, multiple dots, if I can get it in screen. Yeah, there we go. So we can see the multiple dots from the green laser. There we go. So hopefully that was fun, everyone. Uh, this is a... I would love if people go around and try to find different examples, if they have laser pointers at home, uh, like the, the ones you could buy at pet stores. Is the green? Yes, so please do not, thank you for asking that, Gerda, actually, please do not, if you get a laser pointer, absolutely do not point laser pointers up if you're outside. Please don't do that. Very, very important safety tip. Airplanes, lasers go in a straight direction and they travel, ideally, right, the good ones, they travel forever until it interferes with something. And sometimes that's an airplane, and so that's very, very bad to do, especially with the higher power ones. But that's a large reason why they actually restrict how powerful a laser you can buy online uh, without, without a lab or, or some of these um, higher security or, or safety issues. Yeah, and definitely do not point them into people's eyes uh, because those, your, eye is a your eye is a lens and focuses right onto your retina. So if you're putting a laser beam onto your eye, it focuses to that retina and that will burn. That will, that will very, be very damaging to your eye. With Pink Floyd, yeah, I'll do, I'll do a Pink Floyd episode with uh, a bunch of colors. So, yeah, please don't point them at the sky. But, in theory, Gerda, just to answer your question, absolutely. So, it's, uh, it's, it has to do with power, but only if there's things in the way of that light to absorb it. But if there's nothing in the way, or if you have a very um, uh, scarce area of the sky that you're pointing to, uh, as far as atmosphere and things, it can definitely reach, uh, if there's enough of it, to, to reach... Yes, yeah, yeah. Probably. I think the boards are scary for a lot of reasons. Also, the lack of uh, emotion, I think, makes them inherently scary. 
but hopefully that was fun. So if people have uh, examples where they aren't pointing them in the sky or in each other's eyes, but if you have other examples where you play around with a laser pointer and see interference patterns, um, other things that you find around your home, I would love to know about it. So please email me and I'll share them and, uh, and email me at the scope science. I'll put it up here. Yeah, the, it will, the atmosphere will, but it will, it'll scatter the light um, or absorb some of it depending on the color. But it also depends on, so the power will tell you how much light you're actually uh, sending. And if the higher power, the more photons, the more intense the light is, and the more you have. So if it scatters, you still have light left over to get through. But either way, it's, a, it's best to be safe um, and not point them up. So if it'll focus here. Let's see. Like, there we go. So please email me. And I would love to know how you, yeah, in the classical description, light is a wave. Oh, actually, good point. Actually, this is, yeah, that's a very good point, Yura. Thank you. Um, so classical physics and then quantum, it has to be treated more like a particle in certain uh, circumstances because it has to be like that absorbing example here. The... This is a discrete amount of energy, so we treat it kind of like a particle or, or a packet of energy. How do you make a one photon? It's hard, uh, and I missed the other two comments, I'm sorry. Uh, the a one photon experiment is very hard to do, so you have to have very sensitive equipment, and there are things called um, photomultiplier tubes, so you can actually multiply the signal you'd get from one photon until it's bigger to tell you that you had one photon, but it makes the signal big enough to see. So there is the email address. I would love to hear from people if they have examples of how they've used uh, a laser pointer, one of these uh, lower power ones that you can get at a toy store, and found different uh, examples of things around the house that show you this diffraction pattern. I would love to hear about it. So please email me. And Or, better yet, if you have uh, a picture, if you have Instagram, share it with me on Instagram. That would be great. I have stickers on my keyboard because there is another, there are a couple of different ways you can lay out the keys. Uh, one of them is called Dvorak, so I was teaching myself Dvorak instead of the QWERTY. Uh, it's kind of more efficient as far as where your fingers are spaced <laughs> to answer that question. So that just puts, uh, tells me where all the letters are. But I'll end this one as the quick replay. Uh, I have to do, a, I'll do a very brief chat after, one, after this, but I can't take too long today and I'll explain why in the chat, uh, but tomorrow we'll come back. Photons don't appear on the on the uh, the periodic table because they are not uh, atoms. So only atoms appear on the periodic table. So these are things with uh, these are, are particles, actual particles with mass, and they have a neutral charge, and they're constructed of these smaller subatomic particles. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed that two that other comment. It was, uh, disappeared before I could read it. I'm sorry. So that would be the other recommendation. If you if you didn't type a long comment, I try to do this too. I'll copy and paste it before I send it. So in case the broadcaster doesn't see it, um, just because it goes too fast, I can send it again. So uh, please, uh, if, if there's time where you have, where you can, send it again. Or come back. I'll do a quick Q&A, just chat session, not really Q&A afterwards. Um, but we will talk about whatever anyone would like. But hopefully that was fun. Please email me with examples if you found them around your house of diffraction. And we'll talk, I'll tie in yesterday's crystal discussion with today's quantum discussion, or, or I should say wave interference discussion, um, and how they use x-rays and actually to find out what the crystal shape is by using these properties. And so to further, I think it was getting into the periodic table answer. So those atoms, thank you, Parker, those atoms. Yes, yes, Ronan, yeah. So we were, um, we, so maybe somebody asked about dark matter earlier. So we do, we see its influence, but we don't actually see it, what it is, because it doesn't give off light, um, and so we call it dark. Uh, so we, we don't quite know what it is yet exactly. But um, yeah, we can talk, I would love to talk more about that in the uh, after chat session or another day's chat session, but hopefully that was enjoyable and interesting and uh, people could people enjoy finding their own ways around the house to play with the uh, the interference of light. Uh, we can if you want, you can, we can talk about that. I don't know if I'll be able to help you at all, but 
1905 paper on Einstein. The the photoelectric effect? Is that what you're talking about, Euro? Yeah, I know the iPhone does suck. Uh, okay, so I'll wrap this one up for a quicker replay, even though people can do that instantly now. And thank you for joining and sticking with me, and I'll be back shortly for a brief uh, chat session afterwards. And this is kind of my normal format, and... Oh, yes. Not, not purely a wave, the, the particle... Uh, the particle behavior of light, that, that photoelectric effect. So I'll come back and do a brief one. And if people like this format, I would love to know if people like it or don't like it, where I do the shorter show topic session first and then the Q&A after. So I'd really love to know if people uh, enjoy that format and if that's useful or if they want to suggest a different one. I would, I'm totally happy and open to feedback. That's what's great about this, uh, this interactive aspect. So great, great, thank you. Yes. Light is both. All right, so I'll wrap this one up and be back in a few minutes. Happy science, everybody. Uh, happy day. Have a wonderful day. Yeah, short is good for the replay. Right, right, right. So I'll end this one now and see y'all later. Happy science. Down Periscope.